Awesome. I'm glad you could take some time out, uh, you know, to chat today and uh, chat about turtle conservation, which is something I actually care about and, uh, you know, try to uphold up here in Muskoka where we have a ton of species. So, yeah, no, it's, it's very timely because uh, it's just just getting busy. Last week, we were really busy and we, we get a lot from Muskoka area as well. So, nice. yeah. Nice. Yeah. So the Ontario Turtle Conservation Center, I'm saying the name right, um, what is like some of the mandates that you guys have? So our mandate is, is to uh, help in the protection of Ontario's turtles in any way that we can and mitigate, help to mitigate some of the many threats that are facing Ontario's turtles. Gotcha. So, and we do that, we, we have a very multi-pronged approach and that way we can have a bit of an impact in all areas. So obviously the turtle hospital helps to mitigate the effects of road mortality. Mm -hmm. um, and we see about 2000 admissions a year. Oh, wow. um, yeah, so that's pretty, it's pretty amazing. And they come from all over Ontario. And then um, the uh, surviving ones, which is the majority, do um, go back to their home wetland. But a lot of those are females that were hit while they were laying eggs. So oh. we also, yeah, so we also collect the eggs and incubate and hatch them. So last year, I think we had almost uh, 8,000 eggs. And then those. Yeah, those babies then go to be released back to the mother's home wetland as well. So that helps to boost population. And then probably every bit as important as that is our education program. Because um, if we can inspire, uh, you know, a large amount of people to carry out stewardship activities, even if it's just as simple as helping a turtle across the road or protesting it, protecting a nest on their own property or, you know, helping them mitigate a lot of the human related threats because they're all human related. Yes. Um, then I think that's that's going to have even more effect than the hospital itself. Um, and then the other part of what we do is uh, field studies. So we do field research where we're sort of ground truthing, making sure that what we're doing is working. So we're radio tracking a group of our head started or our juvenile blandings that we've hatched at the center. So they are, we're tracking them alongside a group of wild hatched ones of the similar size. So gotcha. we're seeing once we release those into the wild, are they surviving, in, you know, comparable to the wild ones? And then we can sort of extrapolate and see how they're going to augment the population. And, and they are, they're doing very well. So, but we've learned a lot along the way from that about how to better improve their survival. Okay. Nice. That's, and then the last thing, um, piece of the puzzle is uh, we, we're very data rich. So we generate a lot of data that's really useful for other projects. Mm -hmm. So even something as simple as where did the turtles come from that were hit by a car, they can help to um, inform mitigation strategies like eco passages in that yes. area. So the com combination helps us to tackle all of the threats. So the human related threats is habitat loss, road mortality, boating mortality, poaching. So we educate people on um, poaching and where to report suspicious sightings, um, invasive species, you know, the whole gamut we can, uh, we can have an impact on. And then we, we quantify that, we, we track that very closely. I'm just compiling something for a report right now, just to, because yes. we do surveys of the people, we, they, so they fill out conservation action surveys. So they, yes. as a result of what we do, what did they go on to do? So that's very cool because we can then, really quantify the impact of our education. So that's sort of it in a nutshell. Each one I could go on for an entire day, but um, <laughs> you, get the, you get the idea. I do, I do. And yeah, and I, I know I knew a bit about, you know, some of the stuff you, you did in regards to, you know, saving turtles or, or dealing with, you know, with eggs and bringing them back and hatching them back in their natural environment. Uh, and that's why I wanted to talk to you a bit because I think it's it's important people understand, um, you know, the how important turtles are to our our natural environment because they are a native species to a lot of these ponds and rivers and lakes and and shorelines. Um, can you talk to me a little bit about the importance of turtles and and why we need to continue to protect them and and watch their uh, watch them thrive in the in the natural environment. And that's really a key point, isn't it? Like we, being in the conservation field, obviously we we protect them just because we feel that they they have a right to be there. But 
there's a lot of people that take part in conservation that may have a different motive. So well, there's lots of great reasons. First of all, um, they're integral to the biodiversity of our native wetlands. So they are often one of the biggest biomasses in that wetland. It's like a Jenga puzzle. It's so the interconnected web and each piece is important, but they are, they are important in the wetlands. And and again, it's, a, it's an easy sell for conservation because even if you aren't motivated by protecting the species, the wetlands is so important. All the wetlands in Ontario are so important for our health. I mean, they act like the, the filtration system of our water supply. So if they're healthy, we get a healthy water supply. And that's, that's motivation for some people who may not care about turtles. I mean, turtles themselves are so cool, right? They've been around for over 200 million years. Yeah. Cool thing is they can do amazing things physiologically mm. that um, uh, we would be very interesting to understand and very helpful for us potentially. Like the things that they can do, like surviving in almost zero oxygen. Yeah. Um, they can uh, store sperm for years and still be viable. Nice. Yeah. Sorry, is, can you see me? These things are, are really... I mean, they could potentially be very useful for humans if we understood them better. So they, yeah. but the reason that we conserve them is because we feel that they should be conserved because they belong here. It's their home. All the problems are human related. So uh, we feel that it's important as humans to be part of the solution as well. And what we're doing is obviously not solving the entire problem, but we're helping to buy time to fix the problem. Now, the numbers that we do because of the life history of turtles, it does have a population impact. So unlike most species, if you were doing what we're doing, it may just help the individual. Yeah. With yes. these guys, because they live so long, you know, some of them could live 50, 75, 100 years or more. We don't even know how long they live exactly, but we know they live at least 90, 100 years. They need to be around that long to even have a chance of that population being healthy. So they need to be around... I think in snapping turtles, they've estimated about 60 years to even have a chance of replacing themselves. Gotcha. In the so any one of those adults that is lost is irreplaceable to the population. So any way that we can mitigate or put back some of the losses is great. And then any way we can augment the population with the, the juveniles that we've had started, that's gonna help. Um, again, it's not gonna fix the problem, but it's gonna help to buy time so yeah. there's still turtles left when they uh, uh, really do solve the problem. And there's a lot, hundreds of road more um, mitigation projects going on across yeah. Ontario. So eco passages are going up all over the place. They work, they prevent mortality. It's just that they cost money. So, yeah. um, and there's a lot of citizen science groups that are advocating for that. The MTO is highly motivated for that township. So everybody working together, it's come a long way in the last 15 years. Like it was almost unheard of 15 years ago and now it's quite commonplace. Yeah. But there still could be more that that's done. And, and that's that's the that goes with education too, because a lot of people um they know what's happening, they want to help change it and they don't know how. So we help to uh, facilitate that by pointing them in the right direction of what they can do to help maybe talk to their local council, yeah. um, express their concerns or bring it up to, um, uh, you know, the, the local authorities so that, because that's tends to be how things get done a lot quicker than in the science world. We, it, it gets done very slowly if it's done, you know, it's all done uh, within the research world. Whereas if 300 people gather together and say, we want change, it tends to get done a little quicker. So we can help facilitate that. We've started a, a network on our website. It's called the Ontario Turtle Conservation Network, and it's okay. in partnership with Parks Canada. And that helps to do just that. It's a resource for people to, to get on. It's on our website. You can look it up. It's, um, it shows them what work is being done across the province. And it's, it's meant for the, um, the science world, but also the layperson's world as a citizen scientist. Okay, they gotcha. can look up. They can link into what's going on. It also allows collaboration between the different organizations, so that hopefully um, will uh, motivate more partnerships and projects ongoing. Just to you know, just I found it very useful, and and we 
implemented it, but it's like, oh, I didn't know those people were there. Let's reach out to them. Maybe, you know, yeah. we can work together on something. So, yeah, it's it's just sort of addressing the problem from many different angles and trying to have as big as impact as we possibly can. Yeah, that's awesome. And I love that it's not just, oh, we're just going to do this. It's looking at it holistically to steal a cliched word now <laughs> and an overused word, but it is looking at it from a holistic um, angle where, like you said, you're talking to the people, you're talking to the governments, we're talking to, um, there's, you know, there's the hospital, uh, the advocacy, and everything that you're doing um, and everything that all the people who are contributing to the effort are doing is being helpful. And like you said, in the last 15 years, we have turtle crossings going up. We have the, you know, we have that ecological awareness of the importance mm -hmm. of having these turtles around. And they're really a really cool creature. I mean, I've a couple of times, even before um, this was so in the news, I would stop. One was on a driveway going up to a golf course. There was a, a blanding turtle crossing, um, and there were cars coming. And so I stopped and, you know, was kind of making sure no cars would come. My son was with me. He was taking pictures of me. And eventually the turtle wasn't moving. I'm like, okay, well, I don't want you to run over. So I picked him up by the hind, you know, by his hind quarters <laughs> and then moved him very gently to the direction he was going or she was going um the direction the turtle was going um and he, he even peed on me <laughs> but we got him across and uh and so it was like you know my son was like oh you know you stopped everyone to do that and i said yeah i said you know these turtles are important and the poor thing is so small the fact that we're paying attention doesn't mean everybody's paying attention so we got to get more people and human beings paying attention to where they're driving what they're doing um and and another time there was a snapping turtle i didn't touch it but i kind of just you know shoot it along across the road on highway 60 of all places which is a very mm -hmm. busy highway in between lake of bays and uh algonquin park um i stopped the traffic one of my buddies who works for hydro was in his truck laughing because he was like i can't believe you're doing this but i and then other people were waving and cheering me on for doing that um uh, and, you know, it was a, quite a large snapping turtle, and I just kind of shoot it. I didn't touch it. I just kind of moved towards it, and it started moving a little faster <laughs> across the road. So, you know, and more people. Oh, well done. Yeah, so that's great. So, yeah, the more people that do that, the better. And, and as you pointed out, there's more and more awareness now. People want to help. We have a lot of calls. Um, we just had to get, a, like, a multi-line phone for this season because we get so many calls a day. And yeah, people... Yeah. You know they want to help so we we don't want to miss any one of them so that we can you know steer them in the right direction and you know again tens of thousands of people helping makes a yeah. big impact big um, time. We're, we're going to be expanding our education program we're in the process of building a new facility and uh, that we need a bigger facility for the hospital i mean if you saw it even now we've only had 80 admissions so far but that's they're all in one small area and all the ones we have 2000 or more than 2000 to release. Mm -hmm. So they're still with us. So it's very congested. So it's going to allow more space for the hospital because we are also a teaching hospital. So it allows people to other vets and that to come and, and learn, but also it's going to have a really expanded education center, both inside and out so that we can become a destination. And you know, the more people that get the word, the better and it sort of takes on a life of its own doesn't it like you you obviously have told family your son's seen that you told family you told friends and then so on and so on it just it becomes the norm rather than the exception to help and i think we we don't focus on it the negative there's very few people that to that deliberately harm turtles but hopefully our education will make it even fewer yes yes yes, yes. i don't think anybody well who i can't say that for sure you're right. I believe it's very few people will deliberately, but you know, if you're not aware and you're not paying attention, it's where the accidents happen and where the incidents happen where turtles are harmed. If you're aware exactly. and you're paying attention, it, it is avoidable in probably 95% of the cases. You know, sometimes there's unfortunate things happen, but there's a lot of times you do have time to stop. You do have time to avoid hitting the turtle. You do have time. If you have time to stop and help, that's even better. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, and that's kind of why I want to talk to you a bit about, you know, the, for people wanting to stop and help, is, like, is there a right way, wrong way to do these things? 
Oh, that's a, that's a really good point. And yeah, you're spot on right with all your points there. Um, there. Well, the number one rule is safety first, human safety first. We don't want anybody taking a risk um, in, in going out into traffic and, and risking getting injured themselves. So to make sure it's safe, I always carry a Rubbermaid container in the car with my Purell and my all the stuff that I might need. Um, and to pull over, put your flashers on, and only if it's clear to go and, and help them across the road. And you you pointed out rightly in the direction they're going, even if it doesn't make any sense to us. Okay. Um, <laughs> and safe handling is important. So if you've never handled a snapping turtle, um, then we do have some videos on our website. But if people aren't comfortable, then, you know, don't do anything you're not comfortable with because they can give you a nasty bite. Yes. <laughs> um, with snapping turtles, we tend to come from behind and pick them up underneath the shell and carry them like a, a tray of drinks or a pizza. Okay. But you, you do need to feel confident in that and to, to get some um, training on that. But yeah. most of the small ones, you can safely pick them up one hand on either side, but they even the small ones may bite because they feel extremely threatened, of course, when you're picking yeah. them up. So to keep your fingers away from the biting parts and yeah. always yeah. to, everyone has Purell in the car these days still. So just to wash your hands after, but yeah, number one, human safety. And then if we can help the turtles too, then all, all the better. Exactly. Exactly. And that's great. I'm glad you mentioned that. And, and the way, because lots of people want to help and mm -hmm. lots of people, but it's like, do it the right way and make sure don't just shoo them back towards the water because they might be going somewhere for a reason across the road and then be coming back later. Uh, you know, there's all these things that people need to be aware of. And we're, we'll definitely share your website when we post this and, and share everything so that people can easily just click the link and, and head over to the Ontario uh, Turtle Conservation Center website and, and get all the wonderful information that's there. Um, there was another thing I wanted to mention about, uh, about the turtle crossings, like when you see those signs. Um, is there... Is it like kind of a year round thing now? I mean, probably not in the winter, but is there certain times of year where turtles are more active um, going across the roads? Yeah, so um, and it depends on the weather. A nesting season, of course, is the busiest time and that's June, but we see as many males admitted to the hospital as females. So the males are out now. We, as I said, we've had about 80 admitted so far, which is very early. We had that warm weather, had them out. So we have lots of, males you know small blips all season long and then one huge peak for the females in june so it's yeah so it's not just females but and may to october pretty much and it really depends on how early the spring is how warm it is and how warm the fall is yeah. they're, they're cold-blooded so they can't move around when it's too cold but uh, they love the, the low 20s sunny days they'll be out in full force nice nice yeah and that's what i was wondering is there yeah because this is the time now where it's, it, it's mating season's coming up. The turtles are going to be moving around. Eggs are going to be laid. You know, uh, the females are probably looking for a nest, you know, uh, in, in the right area that's safe from predators and whatnot, right? So we have to be extra cautious. We should always be cautious in warmer weather, but we need to be extra cautious in the, in the coming months, the next few months. Exactly. And a lot of people don't know that our turtles, they're, they're semi-aquatic, so they do spend a lot of time in the water but they also spend a lot of time traveling on land. And depending on the species, that can be a short distance or it can be tens of kilometers. So yeah, they're often found when people say, how did they get here? It's in the middle of nowhere. There's no water around. Well, that's that's normal for them. And and they would it would be fine if um, you know, it wasn't for humans putting roads in the middle of where they're going. Because in Southern Ontario, it's, it's the highest density of no road networks anywhere in Canada. You can't go more than a kilometer or two without running into a road. And that overlays almost perfectly with the highest density of turtles in the whole of Canada. So it's it's the place for turtles anywhere in Canada, but yeah, unfortunately it's the most developed as well. So I know. Yeah, it's yeah, and it's we just we have to focus on the positive, and the positive is we can have an impact. And uh yeah, the number one thing is just to just we just try and keep getting the word out, and now's the best time to do it. And people are, as they say, them they really want to help. Um, and everything they do, even if it's just one thing, if, if yeah, tens of thousands of people are doing one little thing, it yeah. adds up to, to a huge impact, you know. And there's, there's, as I mentioned before, there's some really amazing citizen science groups out there now that have hundreds of participants. And they literally will babysit, they watch for the turtles to come out, 
they, they follow, you know, at a, at a respectful distance, they follow them, watch them lay their eggs, make sure they get back safely. And so there's one, a huge one in Brampton and there's, uh, well, they're all over the province now. Yeah. So, and our network helps to plug more people into that. So it's, I, I, we talk to them quite a bit and uh, they, they have a lot of enthusiasm and um, yeah, they're, they're making a, a big impact. So I think they feel pleasantly surprised at, at how much they can, you know, turn the tide for, for these species. Nice. That's awesome. Um, and that brings me up to my last, last questions for you, Sue. And, and, and it was the perfect segue because what I was going to ask you is people wanting to get involved more with, with what you're doing and help more. Um, can they just contact you through the website or the organization through the website? Can they donate funds? What can they do to help? Ah, well, that's, that's a really good point. Yes. So, um, we're a registered charity, okay. so we do run on uh, private donations. We apply for grants just like everybody, every other charity, but it's it's pretty competitive. So we, we do rely on on private donors. Okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so any volunteer can get involved from anywhere in the province. So you can donate funds or supplies or, or from our wish list. Um, you can become a turtle taxi volunteer. And that's, he doesn't need any specific training. You just need a driver's license to be able to do it. And how that works is um, those 2000 turtles, they don't come to us on their own. Obviously they get driven and they're often from very far away. So we, we anybody who finds an injured turtle anywhere in Ontario can call our hotline. And we have a, um, a network of first responders. And these are vets throughout the province who out of the goodness of their heart, they help us out. We provide all the training and the supplies they need. So if someone calls from Sudbury, our hotline, people can say, okay, there's a first responder there, take the turtle there to get immediate attention. And then we can get uh, volunteers to bring them to the center. And we have over a thousand of those volunteers, but we always need more, no matter how many we have. Because I mean, you can imagine like you have 2000 coming in and 2000 going out. That's a lot of driving. Yeah. <laughs> and, there's a lot yeah, of driving. And unfortunately, you know, they're doing, they're paying for everything themselves, the gas and that. So there's a limit to how much one person can do. So the more, if everyone does a little bit, yes. then it helps yes. a lot. And then we have a separate email address for that um, turtle taxi at ontarioturtle.ca okay. or at the info at ontarioturtle.ca is our central information email access. Awesome. So yeah, this people can get involved in any way that they like, you know, helping with um, events or um, fundraising or uh, donating funds themselves. Turtle Taxi is probably the most common because it's um, it's for any anyone anywhere in the province. Yeah. We take yeah. also volunteers to help care for the turtles. So our staff, we have a very small staff, but we have an army of amazing volunteers and they allow us to, to keep we have 3,000 overwintering with us, and that's that's a lot of cleaning yeah. and feeding. So we have about 35 to 40 volunteers throughout the week that help us to do that. Um, and, yeah, that's how we manage to get by with a small small staff. And then we have our summer students, of course, that come on to help us with the summer season. But, yeah, so many ways to get involved if anybody wants to. We love to have students retirees any anybody there's there's a place for sure and it's it's a it's a lot of fun and you can do it to any capacity the turtle taxi system works well because um you don't have to respond unless you're able to do the ride gotcha. so you get an email and it say oh we need a ride for a turtle from here to here you can just say okay that's not gonna work for me today or you go oh, okay i can do part of that ride or all of that ride yeah. so it's it's totally up to your own schedule there's okay. no commitment and i think that makes it very appealing to people um, to to be able to do maybe do one ride or we tend to see the same people day after day though there's some people that just drive almost daily it seems and that's again we couldn't do what we do without these amazing volunteers they're they're just phenomenal that's awesome that's awesome and on that note uh sue thank you for your time i do appreciate yeah my pleasure thank you to all the volunteers that help you <laughs> Hopefully yes. someone will watch this and see this and listen to this. Uh, and and I just, you know, I think that this is really important to get the word out. I just want to say to everybody who watches and listens wherever we are, uh, whether you're watching on the podcast online or you're listening on the radio 
because we'll throw this to our friends at Hunters Bay Radio as well. We'll let them have the audio copy. Uh, please, please help visit visit the website. You'll see all the links. I'll post all the links. I'll do all the social media tags so it's easy for you to find uh, the ways to help the Ontario Turtle Conservation Center. And uh, have a great day, everyone. And Sue, thank you. Oh, yeah, no problem. And one extra, one little point here. If anyone right. has an injured turtle, call us. Don't email. So call our hotline, okay. 705-741-5000. Then we can get to that right away. Email takes a little longer. So always use the phone if you can. All right. Awesome. On that note, have a great day, everyone. Thanks, Sue. Okay. Bye thank you so much. Nice chatting. Take you care. Well. Bye. Bye.